Hello, dear ones. I'd like to share one of Swami Kriyananda's songs with you. This is What is Love? What is love? Is it only ours? Or does love whisper in the flower? This world could not love by our own power. What is joy? Is it just a dream? Or does joy laugh in every stream? the clouds mindless after all for his joy all nature's theme God is dead so men say can't they see all life's his play not a church by him as its own, not a creed makes him fully known. Foolish we, if we limit him, every atom is his throne. love, what is love? Is it love we touch in the flower? This song asks, a very pertinent question, what is love? The other day in, in recent videos, we've talked about perfect love, perfect love casting out fear. And the thought struck me that we often think of love as a feeling, as a sentiment, and certainly it has that component, but it's not limited to that. And Today I'd like to talk a little bit about that greater power because perfect love has to be seen in a context. Perfect love and, and infinite power, infinite energy, in a sense are opposite sides of the same coin. A saint may be full of love, but that saint is very powerful and even generals and kings will sometimes tremble before such a saint because they feel that power. That power is focus. I'm reminded of a song that was part of a little part, a small part of my childhood, but a memorable part. And the song went, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Now, I want to preface this by saying, if, if anyone loves that song and takes offense at my words, I'm sorry in advance. But the thought that, and I'm all for Jesus loving us, by the way, this is a wonderful sentiment, and I'll touch on that later. But the thought that a child would know that Jesus loves him or her because the Bible says so, um, we don't go to a book to, to know that someone loves us. If you ask that child, does your mommy love you? Does your daddy love you? The child would say, oh yes, I feel my mother's love. She cooks for me. She helps me. She, you know, guides me. She, she's there for me. She tells me she loves me. That's the experience of love. We have to actually have the experience. Otherwise, it's just a theory. So, we can't 
be looking to something outside for something that has to live inside. It has to actually be an experience. And if we think of the broader context, we say the words, God is love. That means the entire universe created by God, created out of love, an expression of God's consciousness, is actually held together by love. This is, this is actually the law of physics, if we really want to think about it in the broadest terms possible. And so in ourselves, we have to come to the place where we can realize that love, and this is something, I'll, I'll just digress for a moment. Meditation, we, we often talk about meditation because it has tremendous power to convey a, an inner awareness, an inner experience in our lives. Meditation is both a practice and an experience. About 80 or 90% of the time when we use the term, we're talking about the practice part of it. But the real definition of meditation is the experience that it brings, that that practice can prepare us for. And one of those experiences is to experience love. And I don't mean just mean, oh, I feel love. You know, my heart trembles with love. I feel that love as something that is coming to me. We actually, in meditation, realize we are love. We become love. We become that which we truly are. And in that context, we can realize that, yes, Jesus loves us because we are ready to love him with all our being. And that is an experience that goes beyond anyone ever being able to tell us about it or convey to us in one way or another. It's not something someone, you know, Christ in the Bible asks the disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answer in various ways. And But he keeps probing. Well, but okay, so who do you say that I am? You know, now I've heard what, what, what does the population think? But yeah, some, some say this, some say the other. Who do you say that I am? And they go back and forth a little bit. And finally, Peter pipes up and says, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, nobody told, I'm paraphrasing here, but nobody told you that. You had to realize that in yourself. That was revealed to you. That's what meditation brings us. It actually is a revelation so to achieve perfect love, to experience perfect love, means to become perfect love, means to become what our own highest potential can bring us. And that experience is an overwhelming joy, an overwhelming peace. There's a descriptive, a, a descriptive phrase in the Bible, the peace which passeth all understanding. And that experience is waiting for all of us. We have to dig a little bit. You know, we have to, we have to mine our consciousness. Mining meaning digging and, and working it to reach that level because there's an awful lot of debris in the way that has piled up over the years. But that can be ours once we do apply ourselves to it and to me, the most important part of that is we have to open the heart. Devotion is a whole subject in itself, but just to, to relax into meditation devotionally and realize that, Nirmala was saying in a recent uh, video that we did, that when we open ourselves lovingly, when we practice meditation as an exercise of love for God, not just what can I get, give me peace, give me peace of mind, give me calmness, give me whatever, but actually as a worshipful self-offering, then that love come to, comes to us in a very natural way. Perfect love is our own birthright, but we have to want it 
and we have to apply ourselves to it. Namaste.